Hey guys, Toby Leary here. I'm asked all the time, what's the best gun for self-defense? Well, let's get into it. The best gun for self-defense is, I don't know, it's very subjective. There's a lot that needs to be checked off along the line of questioning that I would ask you if you ask me that. Number one, are you gonna take it outside the home? Or is it just gonna stay in the home? Is it gonna be something you wanna carry on your body? Is it something that you need to defend a village with? So uh, the point is we need to narrow down the search a little bit. If it's gonna be something you wanna carry, then we're gonna talk about a gun that's concealable and accessible and has good capacity and is able to be shot well and uh, manage recoil on, easy gun to use and operate. For that reason, when it comes to the handgun, I would recommend as a first gun or a gun for home defense to get a full size nine millimeter double stack uh, striker fired pistol. That way you can accessorize it. It's got a lot of real estate on the grip for good fundamentals, for learning how to shoot, for also being able to defend the home. You can add a flashlight or a laser to it. You can add a red dot sight in a lot of cases and you're not worried about concealability, you're worried about shootability, and uh, it's a gun that you're probably gonna practice with because it's pleasant to shoot. Larger guns, you can manage the recoil by, because of your good grip, and you'll be able to manage the recoil better. So I would look at a striker-fired nine millimeter full-size gun for the home defense. For an everyday carry gun, you want something that is concealable with the least amount of bells and whistles. What do I mean by that? Well, I would recommend you get something without a thumb safety. What is a thumb safety? It's keeping you safe when you're doing something you shouldn't be doing with the gun. And maybe it's keeping you safe, right? That means it's only helping you when you're pressing the trigger when you shouldn't be pressing the trigger. I would much rather teach people good trigger finger discipline so that they don't put their finger on the trigger until they're driving out on target to shoot and then when they come back, their trigger automatically comes back up and off the trigger. So that's a much better method than a thumb safety. Relying on a thumb safety, I think, is a false sense of security. So for that reason, I don't like decockers and thumb safeties. If you have to have a hammer-fired gun, I like something like the HK uh, with the LEM trigger, that V7 configuration, the, which is a double action only, but it's light double action only. So you have a consistent trigger press from start to finish. It's not real heavy. It's long, but it's not heavy. And you get a shorter double action trigger pull, but it doesn't have the extra bells and whistles like safeties and decockers. As far as shotguns are concerned, they do a great job for home defense, but you got to be wary of buckshot continuing to penetrate through lots of layers of drywall. So shotguns are great for defense one pull of the trigger can be like putting nine 32 caliber balls on target. So it's an extremely effective uh, for defensive purposes, but you just gotta be mindful of over penetration. You might wanna look at maybe like a number four buck or something like that so that you can cut down on some of the penetration. And also there's some mini shells, which I really have come to like by Agula and Federal and they have a buckshot version of those, which are definitely not gonna penetrate as far as a full power double lot buck. Only some guns like the KSG, I know Mossberg and the 500S, and there's also the Mossberg 590s and some of the other earlier versions of the 500 that you can put that Opsol mini clip in so that it'll feed reliably the mini shells. But that's something to think about. You cut down on a lot of recoil and you still have a very effective gun for self-defense. My favorite is personally the rifle for defending the home. I like having the four points of contact and having the capacity of say an AR-15 or any type of detachable magazine semi-automatic rifle for defense of the home. I think you've got plenty of firepower. There's a lot of accessories out there. There's pre-banned magazines for the people who live in banned states and the modularity and flexibility of that platform is almost limitless. So you can really configure it how it fits you and how it works well for the defense of the home. Easy to attach slings and red dot sights and flashlights and lasers if you need to. Um, plus it's easy to manipulate the gun and change magazines should the need arise. So in this day and age, I really like the modern sporting rifle or the semi-automatic rifle for defense of the home. And in some cases where it's legal, 
You might even want to stage one in the vehicle for that time you might be out in the public space and find yourself in the unlikely event you're in some sort of mass shooting event. That would be the weapon I would want at my disposal. That brings on a whole nother level of questions on the legality and how to act when first responders start to show up if you ever found yourself in that situation. But um, we'd do a separate video on that. But as far as what's the best weapon for self-defense, I think it's a subjective thing that you need to work through the details of. But we're happy to help you with that at Cape Gunworks. So come on down or tune in to more of these. Hit the like and subscribe button and make sure you hit the alert, the notification bell. So whenever we come up with a new video for you, you don't miss out. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Toby Leary. We'll see you soon.